Jake, when you when you look at what the Browns did offensively, you had all those skill position guys that um, that were pretty good. You had a, a young quarterback. Was it the line that just didn't? I mean, you, you kind of sit there and scratch your head, going, "Why didn't this group perform? Was it play calling? I mean, is it? A, it's probably a combination, I would imagine." Well, yeah, and I think you you start to hear some of the stories that have trickled out about how they they game planned and how they went through things with their players. And I think you can look at that and say, it just wasn't a well coached group. And whether that was players not doing their part or coaches not expect, you know getting the the results from players in preparation, I don't know. It was just pretty consistently that the quarterback's eyes weren't in the right spot, players weren't lining up in the right positions. It seemed to be a little bit of a throw things together, potpourri type game plan when you got away from the opening script. So I think it was a mixture of things. I think it was poor coaching. I think it was poor game planning at times. I think it's poor in-game adjustments. And then I th- I just didn't think the players played all too well either. So uh, the hope would be that next year you improve. And and, and listen, there's skill talent, not, not skill talent, but the talent along the offensive line outside of J.C.T. Treader and Joel Batonio is not very good, and I think they're going to try to improve upon those things to give their young quarterback as much time in the pocket as he possibly can have. I think that's going to be a big part of what they try to improve and say, hey, we're doing all we can for this kid, so he's going into year three with a new offense, hopefully going to get his eyes in the right place all the time, uh, take better care of the football because they need him to take better care of the football, but they want to put as much talent in front of him on the offensive line as possible, and I think that's a wise thing to do. And if you look at whether it's – um, you know, whether it's the Vikings, the 49ers, or the or the New England Patriots, all three of those teams that they're looking at coaches from have really good offensive lines and have performed well. So I think that that's a big part of what they're going to want to improve for Mayfield. Uh, when you look at, you know, a, a team that doesn't have great offensive line, can play calling, can, is there a way to scheme around that? Is that kind of what you're getting at by game planning? Yeah, I think you have your players knowing exactly what they need to do all the time and with quick processing. I think Mayfield, just when you would notice at the top of his drops, his eyes weren't where they needed to be. He wasn't finding the open player with the defense was giving him. I just didn't feel like he was very well coached, and I just didn't feel like he had a good connection to what was being called, a good connection to the game plan. And I think that comes down to quarterback coaching. I think that comes down to the game plan um, you know, being understood. You know, If Mayfield, there was talk about Mayfield – They would call in plays that they didn't work on that week, that they were surprised to be called. You know, no quarterback should ever go into a game and expect plays to be called that they haven't gone over in the sheet. I mean, you have schemes, you have principles that you try to follow, but you need to go over all 300 or 400 plays that you could potentially call and prep. If If you look at and read some of the best stories of the best play callers and quarterbacks out there, they go through so much of this stuff in preparation that nothing's a surprise. And I think it started to get to the point where Things were just being thrown against the wall in terms of, of, of play calling at times because they didn't have somebody on the sideline calling plays who could quickly process what defenses were doing and how to come up with answers within. And uh, I think at that point it started to really confuse the quarterback in terms of where should my eyes be. He just never really seemed well prepared. Now, whether that's on Mayfield or the coaching, I don't know. But based on things I've heard um, from people in the know and based on you know, the decision that was ultimately made with Freddie, it seems to point toward that was going on on the coaching side too often. Uh, Jake Burns from the Orange and Brown Report. Um, when you look at this defense, um, what areas do you think need to be upgraded? I, you know, I, the defensive line wasn't as dominant as I thought we expected it to be. And a lot of that was guys were beat up and, you know, Miles Garrett suspended for a, a good portion of the latter part of the season. Yeah, I think they need to improve the the the, the uh, defensive line depth in terms of um, maybe even finding a second defensive lineman in interior. I think Sheldon Richard did, did a nice job, but we have not seen the linear growth from Larry Joby that we hoped. They probably need a bigger space eating one technique type player if they stick with the four three. Um, Olivier Vernon was good, but he's uh, he's dealt with injury issues again. He has not had a consistent season without injuries for a while. He's 29 going into next year, almost 30. Um, he's got a $15 million cap hit. They can get out of that and save $15 million and maybe apply it elsewhere or apply it to multiple players. I don't know what they're going to do. That that cap hit is an interesting thing to look at, but they certainly need to improve their defensive line depth um, and probably get another frontline starter there to help with the run game because they were pretty abysmal there late in the year. And I think they could be better coached on the defensive side of the ball fundamentally. 
I think that they overlooked some of those things and didn't do a very good job with fundamentals, and it caught up with them, especially with how they played gaps and fought gaps and stuff in run game. Late in the year, they were just absolutely gouged. Now, some of that's personnel. They were also gouged early in the year, too, if you think back to San Francisco, um, some of those games that Denver that caught up with them there when they were fully healthy. Um, and then safety, they have to address that position. Obviously, Demarius Randall seems like he's on the way out. Um, you know, bringing in a new staff and a new front office – um, in terms of a, a personnel side, maybe they keep him. I don't know. All those players that we kind of presumed were out could be back. You never know. Um, but Demarius Randall, we've kind of pointed to him being out. So if they do that, Morgan Burnett obviously coming off the Achilles injury. You really have Justin Burris, Eric Murray, and um, who fought a knee injury late and showed up red wine. So I think they're going to try to improve that safety position, whether that's in the second or third round or signing somebody. Just the free agent market for safeties has usually got some gems there and the uh, mid to low tiers that can, that can be signed. So I think you're going to see some changes there too. So to me, defensive line may be improving the will linebacker position, and then the safety position has to be improved too. And they might look at a slot corner. I'm not sure. TJ Carey handles um, you know, that duty. He's not been very good at it for the price tag he carries. They can get out of his contract with a minimal hit. So they might look to, to address that position as well.